It is right to save humanity. It is wrong to pollute this earth. It is right to give hope to the future generation. The most criticized scene in the movie An Inconvenient Truth was showing that the combination of sea level rise and storm surge would flood the 9-11 memorial site. And people said, what a terrible exaggeration. Hurricane Sandy slammed into New York City last night, flooding the World Trade Center site. Storms get stronger and more destructive. Watch the water splash off the city. This is global warming. Hi guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be here to talk to you guys about this, this new movie. My daughter says, my daughter is 18, and she says that you two are her heroes. Aww. Because uh, in the movie, the vice president says despair versus hope. And she is, has this despair about what the world will look like uh, in, in the future, but she believes that the work that you guys are doing gives her hope. And she said to me to make sure that I, I say that. Can you talk a little bit about this despair and hope thing? Because I did leave the movie a little bit feeling despair. Sure. Well, you know, John and I are married, and we have an 18-year-old also and a 14-year-old, and they are the main reason we went ahead and made this movie. Um, you know, this film is all about the legacy that we're leaving to our children and grandchildren. Um, Al Gore has a saying that, um, you know, despair can be paralyzing and you have to have a hope bucket. When you deliver information to a population, you have to give them the facts and the serious facts are there that the climate crisis has gotten worse, but you also have to have enough hope that people will act. And we are in a situation now where the cost down curves for wind and solar are so cheap, uh, it, it, it's just, it, it makes economic sense for us to now move towards sustainability. And it's starting to happen. And that's what's so exciting. So I think that young people, if they can understand that, yes, we have done some damage to Mother Earth, but there is still a lot left to preserve. And the exciting thing now versus 10 years ago when the first film came out is that we have the means to do it. We have the solutions in place. It's just a question of how fast we implement it. Well, well you talked about acting, uh, that having people actually move on something here. And what I saw from the movie uh, is that the vice president also talked about how the poorest of us are affected the most. What, what, I, what I've noticed is that, though, it takes a while for poor poor folks and minorities to kind of jump on the bandwagon as it relates to this. Talk about the effort to get uh, minorities and, and those who are poor to really be involved in this process. It's a great, it's a great question. It's a great question. You know, for, for many, many years, one of the reasons it was so difficult to get an international agreement on climate change is because the developing poorer countries of the world said, hey, wait a minute, we didn't create this problem, we didn't burn the fossil fuels that got us into this mess. You guys over there in Europe and the United States and more developed countries who've gone through an industrial revolution really created this problem, you should pay for it. Um, but the amazing thing that's happening now is this concept of leapfrogging. In the film, you mm -hmm. see Al Gore talking to uh, government ministers from India who have an opportunity to leapfrog over the dirty coal and fossil fuel economy right into solar and wind. And in a way, create a, an exciting opportunity for, to bring millions and millions of people out of poverty using clean energy. And it becomes a dramatic moment in the film as you see kind of behind the scenes, we have this incredible political drama that takes place in Paris. And, 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 and the audience will, will understand just how important it is, just like cell phones, you know, uh, in Africa and in India and in poorer parts of the world that didn't have the landline infrastructure, they were able to go to cell phones in a much faster, more efficient way. That's also going to happen with, with uh, sustainable energy. But when you think about, for instance, African Americans and Hispanics here in this country, uh, being in poverty have other things that are more important, right. food, jobs, right. and, and those types of things. What kind of efforts or things can be done? Because this is, it is real, but how do we get them involved more is the, really what I'm trying to get at. Well, the problem is that when people are concentrated on making enough money to put food on the table for their families, it's pretty hard to get them interested in recycling and you know, doing the right, the right thing for the environment. But on the other hand, we are very, um, we're convinced that education 
is the key to winning the conversation on the climate conf uh, crisis and what the solutions are. There's going to be a huge effort with this film to get this movie into schools, to bring school audiences, uh -huh. to, to have organizations pay, to have students come to the movie theater and see the film so that they can become educated about the climate crisis and the solutions because this is going to live with our kids if the kids understand what's going on they can start to affect change maybe they'll cho maybe they'll choose jobs in the alternative energy sector which is the fat by the way the fastest growing job market in the country um, when people saw the first film especially kids who were maybe 10 15 years old when they saw an inconvenient truth Ten years later, when we saw them around the country and around the world, they were doing things in this space that were really making change. So we have a huge effort underway through participant media to get the movie into schools in the inner cities of this country and make sure that we start from the ground up with the education. So, so I have like 15 questions that I want to ask you. And I only have a little bit of time. <laughs> so so I, I want to end on uh, two things. If you could speak to what people should do after seeing this movie and what they could do, but and, and if you could also just a little bit speak about how big money really impacts how we think about all of this stuff. I know that's a lot, but uh, I'm trying to get it all in. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, for a long time, the, the debate around uh, the climate crisis has really been muddied by the fact that the fossil fuel companies have, have, have spread these lies about uh, you know, the climate science and they've tried to cast doubt on what scientists have been warning us about. And it's really been a, a, a very unfortunate aspect of our kind of tribal politics that's happened. You know, people kind of get into their camps and they don't want to listen to the other side. The amazing thing now is that we have an opportunity to completely change our, and rebuild our economy. Talk about uh, people who are impoverished and suffering in this country. We have an opportunity to build a job market um, that, that's, that's absolutely extraordinary on the scale of the Industrial Revolution because we're going to literally change everything about our economy and how we get energy. The fastest growing jobs in this country are in the solar industry. The fastest growing job period is wind technician. Hmm. So there's an opportunity to boost our economy and save the planet. People need to know that. Our politicians need to be honest with people. And if those politicians aren't honest, we need to hold them accountable and vote them out of office. Don't let anybody tell you that we're going to get on rocket ships and live on Mars. This is our home.